<laughs> gonna use Phaser on woman. She is dead. <laughs> they don't really seem that bothered, do they? Um, Bev? It's Lieutenant Worf, the ship's security chief. <laughs> So it is. Well, moving on. Oh, I see what you're thinking. Yes, if we spin wildly out of control by turning one of the nacelles off and destabilize the Cochrane field, it's worth a try. Hello, darlings, and happy my birthday. To celebrate the season, I'm playing through Star Trek The Next Generation, a final unity. Usually when recording games like this, I record it separately to what Twitch sees. But since this is a 4x3 game, and because my computer crashed and erased my clean copy, this is a VOD of the live show instead. For that reason, you'll be seeing a lot more of me than you're used to. I hope you can tolerate it. I'll see you at the end. Mwah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Star Trek The Next Generation, A Final Unity. I'm a scat man, skibbity bop bop. It, it's that's one of the many times it is. Right, I'll just replace the camera quickly while that's happening. Captain's log, stardate four seven one 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 point one. A Federation listening post along the Romulan neutral zone has detected an unidentified vessel headed for Federation space. The Enterprise is moving to intercept. At its reported heading and velocity, the vessel will enter Federation space in approximately 47.3 seconds. Go to yellow alert. We have the vessel on sensors. The ship is a Garidian scout ship. They are driving their engines too hard. Their warp core is critical. The Garidian? What is the status of their relationship with the Romulan Empire? They are on friendly terms and may share technology. Welcome. We are being hailed. Are they? Is it not a thing of beauty? Help us. We are fleeing political persecution. We seek asylum. We are being. Hailed. Look at. At the They're time, this was real out. time. You know, this was photorealism. Number one. It could be a trick. The Garidians have earned a reputation as honorable warriors, Captain. They do not ordinarily resort to trickery. We are within visual range. The Garidians' it... warp drive is failing. They are dropping to sublight speed inside Federation space. Oh shit, I hope they're okay. Slow to impulse. Warbird decloaking directly ahead. The Warbird is also Viridian. They are hailing us. This is an internal Viridian matter. Withdraw at once. You are violating Federation space. They have cut off transmission. The Warbird has locked its tractor beam onto the scout ship. Go to red alert. And then they went to red alert. That's what happened there. Oh, guys. Rebuilt on a Spectrum Holobyte machine. This stunning intro. Take it away. I'm mostly just not talking through this, because it's not a, 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 a genuinely a thing of beauty, asterisk. Space. A final frontier. A much more intimate read there. These are the voyagers of the Starship Enterprise. Its continuing mission to explore strange new worlds. To seek out new life and new civilizations. To boldly go where no one has gone before. Mummy, I live inside.
Captain's Log Supplemental. A Garidian warbird has violated the neutral zone in pursuit of a scout ship. The fugitives may be seeking political asylum, but as yet we have been unable to confirm their intentions. We have been yet to confirm their intentions. It is, isn't it? It's the Casio form, Stefano. So, yes, I apologize, everyone. The, uh, so the green screen's gone fucky-wucky, can't use the green screen, which means when I play with cameras, I fill the whole screen, but I can't be contained, so it will still happen on occasion, and for which I apologize, but only a sort of apologize? It's, it, it'll be good. I'll, I'll, I'll behave. We're not a game. We're an interactive adventure. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Star Tronk, a final unity. Uh, I am one of your captains today. We're going to spoil the hecking broth in this particular kitchen. This game is absurdly complex. Uh, you know how games can be absurdly complex? Well, that, plus made in 1995. Uh, so, for example, obviously there's a lot happening here. We could talk to these crew, we could decide what to do about the impending situation. Alternatively, we could go, go click over here. I go down to engineering. Raising shields. We are now in the engineering section. We can choose to stop delegating, so we are directly in charge of the things happening in the uh, engineering section of the secondary hull. We could then, for example, I know it's, it's worked out quite well. Look how almost neatly this 1995 game's L cars <laughs> connects to the L cars that the weird one built for the channel. So, here's, so we've just left the bridge, we've ignored that important situation, and we're just going to turn off the life support. <laughs> and that will just slowly creep down. And then we can go back to the bridge. Here we are. And we can talk to motherfuckers. So you can, like, ask people for advice like this. Mr. Data, do you have any suggestions? As long as the Warbird maintains a tractor beam on the scout ship, we cannot beam its crew aboard. However, if we maneuvered the Enterprise between the ships, we could temporarily disrupt the tractor beam. We will have to drop our shields to use the transporter. I'm not willing to take that risk. So, as you can see, we've already got a lot of stuff we could potentially be doing here. But here's the thing that really got me, okay? I was sitting on this screen, I mean, over here, I was sitting... That might have been the, uh, the life support. I don't know what happened to it. Uh, I was just sitting on this starting screen of the game while I was setting up OBS and getting ready to stream. And I don't know what, what the complaint is. And then Commander Data said, Sir, they've activated their self-destruct mechanism after about 10 or 15 minutes of idle. So this game, before the internet, before anything, had branching paths enough that if you installed the game and just left it in the corner running for 10 minutes, one of the main ships in the game, a major story point, just blows up off the starboard bow. This game is enormous, much like... Star Trek canon. What do you think I was going to say? And so, it's kind of mind-blowing. And so I'm not... I, I know what you think. I know what you think. There is no game facts open here. There's no guide. We're going to fuck this up, 1995 style. But fortunately, we've got Twitch chat TM here, who I'm sure can guide in the right direction. Uh, good. Uh, shall we ask Riker what he thinks we ought to do? Or shall we talk to old Troy Balls? We're only allowed to slap Troy, apparently. Oh no, that's tactical. Okay. No, we've got to talk to her right ventricle. Any insights, Counselor? The Garidian captain is torn about something, as if she were faced with a difficult dilemma. She has violated the neutral zone. It's more than that. I think she has a personal stake in this matter. Perhaps we should attempt to break the tractor beam. Shut up, Data. Open lightsaber. I will I will show you what the combat screen looks like if you guys want. It's insane. Why is it taking so long to choke to death? 
I'm not willing to take that risk. I've already fucked about in engineering too long. I was sure. I was sure the, uh... <laughs> ramming speed. Shortly through, though, there will be plenty of time for it, I assure you. I've currently got DOSBox running at 6% speed. Uh, we might have to drop that in order to get the combat running at a reasonable speed. We'll see. Let's go down for engineering, see what's... Admiral's log, stardate 47199.3. We have lost contact with the Enterprise. She's several days overdue, and I fear the worst. I'm dispatching the USS Hood to investigate. Yeah, we, we're checking the logs now. It turns out the captain just went down to engineering, fucking relieved Geordi, and turned off all the life support systems? The man's a tactical genius. So that's that. I'm not saying you have to play it like that. Let's start a new game, ladies and gentlemen. So... If we go to tactical, we will instantly engage in combat. Let's see what good old Riker Balls wants to do. No, should we just go and have a look in the back garden? The room is empty. Oh, that's embarrassing. Never mind then, we won't go back there. Uh, you know what, Excalibur? There will be, and I wish I had the, blue, the green screen on, but this is going to happen sometimes. There will be plenty of time for murdering the crew. I don't know what channel you thought this was. <laughs> It's your fave thank goodness you're here, Mr. Do. I was just discussing how absurdly complex the game is. What do you think, number one? You're gonna be my game facts. The Gridians respect strength. If we show any sign of weakness, it might just encourage them to fight. I like that you've got a uh, not fantastic Riker face here, and also not fantastic Riker face here. But if you kind of turn your screen on its side and cross your eyes so they meet, you get a sort of 3D Picasso-esque Riker, and I think that's what they were going for. What do you suggest? Maybe we can use our phasers until they listen to reason. I don't want to provoke them. That may be too strong an action. Or let's give it a try. I don't want to provoke I them. I don't want to provoke them, number one. Oh, well, Picard was up all night. Oh, I wonder what Worf wants to do. Mr. Worf, your analysis. The Gridian Warbird is similar to the Romulan Dideradex class. It is less maneuverable than the Enterprise, but it has slightly more firepower. Do it, though. We'd both take a beating if it came down to a fight. Our records identify the Warbird as the Asirim, commanded by Captain Pintara. Starfleet Intelligence rates her as a capable but unimaginative tactician. My goodness. I will do something honorable, Mr. Caliber. <laughs> Heads back down to engineering, turns off life support. Okay, Mr. Data, shall we attempt to do what Mr. Data recommended, everyone? I don't know if it'll work, it might piss them off, in which case you can see the... You know I said already it's absurdly complicated with branching paths, and if you leave it on this screen for ten minutes, the ship outside just straight up explodes. It's more complex than that, because the tactical options... Oh my god, we're not even getting into it, we're just going to talk to Data. Mr. Data, do you have any suggestions? As long as the Warbird maintains a tractor beam on the scout ship, we cannot beam its crew aboard. However, if we maneuvered the Enterprise between the ships, we could temporarily disrupt the tractor beam. I think what he means is he needs to scan it. Could someone please exclamation mark life forms? We will have to drop our shields to use the transporter. Life forms. You tiny little life forms. You precious little life forms. Where are you? Good. In that case, we'll have to take that risk. Let's make it stir. We'll have to take that risk. Make it so. <gasps> Pre rendered in a cheese grater. We have broken the Gridian's tractor beam. And it's back on. The crew of the scout ship has been beamed aboard. Oh, good. Captain, the warbird is hailing us. Ignore that. <laughs> do we do we play as Picard would? I don't care. <laughs> I'm going to bed. Uh, maybe we should talk to her. On screen. Federation starship. 
This is an internal Gridian matter. You've been warned not to interfere. It's funny, I haven't heard that voice since I must have played this in like 95 and 96. And while I've always remembered her voice, this is the first time I thought, she needs a lozenge. We can say, surely we can resolve this matter without recourse to further violence. We can say, your presence here gives me every right to interfere. Why, oh why, have you violated the neutral zone? We can say, you will leave Federation space at once or face the consequences. Or, you have committed an act of war by crossing the neutral zone. You Surrender your ship like immediately. <laughs> Shall we attempt to not do violence? No, they like, they told me that these guys like grump. Uh, approximately this week, Fiery Squirrel. In the next fortnight, anyway. Your presence here gives me every right to interfere. Why have you violated the neutral zone? They are locking their disruptors on us. Captain, you are harboring dangerous criminals. I demand that you transfer them to my custody immediately. Harboring. They are now guests aboard my ship. I will overlook your violation. Whatever crimes they have committed, you have no right to pursue them across the neutral zone. Before this discussion goes any further, I want to know who these people are and why you have pursued them. Or our Garidian guests were rescued in Federation space. Any extradition will have to proceed along normal diplomatic channels. Hello, Lee Makilo. Nice to have you. They are Mr. Nibbles. We aren't doing a fucking seven of nine in elite forces problem. Should we try the interrogation? That might be helpful. Let's do it after we've murdered this woman. Before this discussion goes any further, I want to know who these people are and why you have pursued them across the neutral zone. They are traitors and killers. My orders are to take them back to Garrod to stand trial for murder and sedition. <gasps> Thank you. Whatever for crimes they may have committed, you had no right to pursue them across the neutral zone. I was sent to bring these criminals back dead or alive, and I will carry out my orders even if it means destroying your ship. I don't know if you guys noticed that. But on that last one, after Picard's zone, he'd already had enough. You could hear him turning the script. <laughs> That's fun. I've been doing a lot of VO for the last couple of days, and now I'm just hearing the voiceover booth. All right. Well, then. It looks like we're in combat, hey, ladies and gentlemen. Good. Thank you for putting that. downcycled my CPU too deeply. I'm just I'm just going to reload the program. Unfortunately, our uh, our page granular limit was met at a missing RAM address. We are being hailed on screen. Help us. We are fleeing political persecution. We seek asylum. It was worth it, I think, to see this incredible CGI again. What do you make of this, number one? It could be a trick. The Gridians have earned a reputation as honorable warriors, Captain. They do not ordinarily resort to trickery. We are within visual range. The Gridian's warp drive is failing. They are dropping to sublight speed inside Federation space. Slow to impulse. Warbird decloaking directly ahead. And then we a do a Gridian fight. showdown. Is on sensors. Targeting oh, Gridian. Yeah. We have Look at this. So I'm going to downcycle our emulation. This combat seems to go a little fast if I don't. I might have to turn delegation on. Because this is incredible. Fire. Let's have a look. Just this is the phaser section, everyone. Here's the phaser section. Targeting Gridian Warbird. Here's the torpedoes. We've got the of course the different salvos as well as the spread you like to choose. Uh, da full damage reads out. Here's information about the con for direct control. Torpedo away. Uh, here we have uh, tactics. Tactics we can give, such as orders to give a counterclockwise screw. Lol. Engage. Fire. Here we have sensors read out of their system, as well as the ability to Federation hail them. Starship. This well, it didn't work. 
Uh, here we have, of course, a, a pseudo 3D readout of what's happening in combat. Uh, but we can ignore it. With this one. I salute you, Captain. You have been a worthy adversary. Does that mean we should peel off? But of course, if you don't think this is complicated enough, we can leave battle while it's happening in real time to report to engineering. Listen to that wonderful background noise. Target ship is torpedo cloaking. away. While the fight, while the, all the battle is happening, where we can play directly with where the antimatter is being funneled and where the power is being sent in real time aboard the bridge. And then we can go back into the tactical view, where the combat is going insane. The ship is declogging. Torpedo locked. Well then, fire it, sir. Direct hit. Fire. You know I not finished the card. I promised you that. So, you've seen the level of complexity in this game in uh, the decisions, the branching narrative, and now the incredible complexity of the. Uh, engineering and combat. I was nine. I didn't get very far in this game. And this is before getting into the actual point-and-click adventure. We haven't actually been down to any planets yet. And that is the bread and butter Torpedo of this game. Away. You're awesome, Frankie McDoodoo. They're dead, lol. I mean, oh no. The Meridian course. ship has been destroyed. Acknowledge. Auto destruct sequence initiated. <laughs> Wolf's not into it. He's slapping my hand away. Acknowledged. Auto destruct sequence initiated. Let's play a game of cat and mouse. seconds to auto destruct. Why, yes, that is Mrs. Magel Barry. Auto destruct sequence disengaged. This is the fucking tutorial, is it? Apparently, this is one of those games where you need to read the manual. I think. I have not. Captain, our new arrivals are requesting to speak with you. Their names are Lucana, Avakar, and Tabat. The, why does he? Why do I have to remember that? I'm the captain. You do the remembering. Well, pudding, my dear puding gnome. Not only. What are your orders, Captain? I'm busy. I'd like to consider my situation. Oh, set course for the Ruinor Sector and resume our patrol. Set course for the Ruinor Sector and resume our patrol along the neutral zone. Yes, sir. Engage. Oh, my God. Did you see that? <laughs> that tiny preview of the horrors that will be <laughs> trying to plot courses in this game? All right, so let's leave our old... Uh, our old OBS overlay. So, as you were saying, no, my, my dear friend Puding, you don't need to self-destruct. What you do is you go to engineering, and you go to other, and you turn off the life support. That's how it's done. Oh, but I've delegated it, so it's being looked after. In fact, this game is so complex, I want... Oh my god, look at this. Oh, so you can get more out of it, but it means you risk overheating the dilithium matrix. And that's for the antimatter antimatter reaction in the dilithium core, and that's for the fusion. Warning. Life support system at 50%. I don't know how that happened, love. <laughs> you take care of it. Captain, we are receiving an emergency transmission from Simcoe 4. You want me to try and destabilize the warp core mid-warp? Oh. Simcoe 4? Isn't there a research center there? Yes, sir. The work at Merton's orbital station focuses on power generation. The researchers there are among the best in the Federation. On screen. I feel like... This is Captain <laughs> John Picard in the Federation <laughs> Starship nice. Enterprise. How can we be of help? <laughs> Like a fucking turnip. <laughs> oh, that was a bit xenophobic, really, wasn't it? I don't know why that tickled me so much. 
Oh, maybe it's his plaintive 1995 VGA graphics. And the, and, the, and the way he looks so serious about it. It's just all like... Sorry, it's a professional stream. Captain Picard, I am Danab, Chancellor of Simcoe. We are in need of immediate assistance. Merton's orbital station has been attacked by an unknown vessel and does not answer our hails. Attacked? But the station is a purely scientific facility. <laughs> Thanks, Caruso. Is the attacking vessel still present? Impressively for the time, that was spatialized. Uh, that was the voice of Riker coming from the right spot in the bridge for me. We do not know. Whoever or whatever they were, our sensors did not detect them. Perhaps it was a cloaked Romulan vessel. That's always your answer. <laughs> I doubt the Romulans would venture this far into Federation territory. The risks are too great. That's interesting. Uh, what was interesting is that I, I don't think of Jean-Luc as a person with a rhotic accent, but that was definitely a, a rolled R on territory. Captain, you must hurry. The attack has destabilized the station's experimental power core. We don't know how long we have until a core breach. But I can tell you the resulting energy release and radiation would be catastrophic. Well, you seem pretty calm about it, bruh. What about survivors? Did anyone get off the station? We detected several escape pods, but we haven't recovered them yet. The pods we detected could hold only a few dozen. There are hundreds aboard the station, including families. Each of them. Delicious. Set course for Simcoe 4. I hope it's not too late. Thank you, Captain. I hope you arrive in time. Right on time. Right, right, right on time. Sorry. We'll do our best. Picard out. Dr. Crusher. Crusher here. Hello, Haruna. Doctor, we may shortly be taking on a large number of wounded. Possibly hundreds. How much time have I got? Not enough, I'm afraid. Picard out. Miss LaForge? Yes, Captain. We're en route to Merton's orbital station. They've been attacked, and they're going to need immediate assistance. See what you can find out about their experimental power core. I'll see what I can dig up, but the Simconians do some advanced work. It may take a while to figure it all out. Then I suggest you work quickly. Millions of lives on the planet's surface may be at stake. I expect a full analysis of the situation and our options as soon as we're within sensor range. Yes, sir. Well, they're not becoming a Type 1 species anytime soon, are they? Engage. Again, just little hints. Little hints of how absurdly complex this is. SG, I like your plan. Shall we find out what happens? Just out of curiosity. We're currently mid -warp. We're going to head down to engineering. Uh, here's, here's the power system. Can we maintain warp when there's nothing flowing through the warp core? Purely out of curiosity. Oh, no, delegate. No, stop trying to stop trying to hit my hands away, LaForge. I'm the fucking captain. I'm the captain! And I can do whatever the fuck I want! Captain, please. It's over with the pleasers, baby. It's over with the pleasers and the thank yous. I'm the captain, bitch, and I'm in charge of you. And I'ma do whatever the fuck I want to do. Got my face in, I got it set to kill, goddammit. Oh, shit. Okay, reactor output is at nil. Matter antimatter reactor down. Wow. Oh my god, this 1995 point and click adventure game has a fully set up power system aboard the goddamn Enterprise. Oh, I see what you're thinking. Yes, if we spin wildly out of control by turning one of the nacelles off and destabilize the Cochrane field, it's worth a try. We're doing an awful lot to try and fucky wucky this thing. Fusion reactor at 50%. We're not in warp. Let's do it. Oh my god, I have to choose the X, Y, and Z coordinates? Warning. Fusion reactor at 50%. Okay, press the course. Engage. Best in the fleet, Mr. Gnome. By the end of the day, they'll all be dead. Warning. Fusion reactor at 
Warning. Fusion reactor at 50%. Oh, that was us arriving. Talk. We have arrived at the Simco system in response to a distress call regarding Merton's <laughs> portal station. The station was apparently attacked by unknown forces, leaving it in danger of a power core. Because of your suggestions, I honestly thought that was going to be... We're within center range of the Merton's <laughs> orbital station, I thought that sir. was going to be the port nacelle just going... Uh, but no, <laughs> we just happened to arrive at the same time. On screen. Warning. Fusion reactor at 50%. The Forge here. Report. What is the condition of the station? You're looking at what's left of the Merton's orbital station, one of the largest research centers in the Federation. The focus of their work is on power generation. Five years ago, they built the prototype of an experimental power core, and it's been running the station ever since. Power generation studies? That doesn't warrant an assault like this. I don't think so, Haruna, but I like I've been thinking. in contact with Starfleet headquarters. Power generation is only part of what this station studies. For several years, researchers here have been working on new ways to detect cloaked vessels. <gasps> That's against the rules, though. If the Romulans discovered this, they might have risked a raid. The Simconians did not detect the attacking ship. It may have been cloaked. That's speculation, Mr. Wolf. We have no proof the Romulans were involved. What about the fucking Garidians? First dudes we've met in this game. Blokes who have precise Romulan technology. We literally have goddamn political prisoners right here. That they're, they're next door. All right, they're in that there. They're waiting to talk to me, and we're all like, hmm, I don't, I don't know anyone who can cloak. Hmm. Hmm. This sure is a Star Trek. But I think we'll figure it out together using our power of brain. It is speculation, Mr. Well, Wolf. whoever it was, something powerful punched through the station's shields and sliced off an entire research wing. I hope it wasn't the boggers. What do you mean, sliced off? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I'm... I'm guessing here. But I'm beginning to suspect they did the voiceovers for this game very early in the morning. Because dear Patrick Stewart is very down here. And even Riker, who almost never has glottal folds, and I've never heard him talk with that proper, you know, F Alley girl fricassee before, is just like, oh, it shouldn't be up this early, let alone in front of a microphone. There is insufficient debris in the area to indicate that the missing section was destroyed. It is possible the attackers simply removed it. Geordi, could that be what destabilized the power core? It's okay, there is coffee in that nebula, so we should be fine. No, and that's what I can't figure out. Damage to the upper deck should only cause minor problems, but I'm reading serious power fluctuations. Maybe serious enough to breach the power core's containment field. What will happen if the containment field fails? I can't say for certain, but with the amount of energy that thing can put out, I wouldn't want to be around it when it goes. Is there any way to shut down the core? There's a fail-safe mechanism which is supposed to jettison the core automatically in an emergency. I'd say this qualifies as an emergency. Why wasn't the core jettisoned? The only way to prevent it is by manual override. Someone has to be there to stop it. That means there's someone still alive in there. Data, are you picking up any life signs? The station's shielding is interfering with our sensors. I cannot tell if any of the crew are still alive. However, life support is still functioning. But power readings indicate that it may fail at any time. I hope it doesn't, Ooh, though. Dr. Crusher. Crusher here. We are nearing Merton's station. Are you prepared for casualties? My staff is ready to do double shifts. We can handle about 330 emergency cases, but we'll have to beam the rest down to Simcoe. Understood. Hmm. What is your recommendation? We can't do anything from here, but <clears throat> to get an away team aboard, we have to find a way through those shields. I believe I have a solution. The station's upper shields are badly damaged. If we establish a lock on a transporter on the upper decks, a transporter beam could penetrate the weakened shields. I've got my entire Star Truck ready and, and rolling. I've got, I've got the best Enterprise D here. Yeah, it's all rock here. Once we're in, we should be able to jettison the power core. Then we can lower the station's shields and evacuate the wounded. Again, let us bear in mind the 16 screens we've seen so far before even starting an away mission, which is the bread and butter of this game. This is the introductory mission. Very well, number one. Make it so. 
Jordy, I want you and the rest of the away team ready to go in 20 minutes. <laughs> For some reason, just calling it the Super Enterprise D really tickled me. We'll be there in 10. I don't think there's anyone in the conference lounge. Oh, this is for... Maybe we should talk to our current... Chef, what do you think? Okay, that's on me. I'll go back to engineering. <laughs> maybe I should tell... Ask Mr. right... Ford, you <laughs> have Ford, take over. Yes. Do we work on beaming aboard, or do we interview our political prisoners? Maybe this is time sensitive. Having discovered that this game is time sensitive, and if you sit on this screen long enough, people fucking blow up and you lose them from the game, maybe we should deal with that first. Captain. We should check our orders from Starfleet. I don't know how to check my orders from fucking Starfleet. You do it. Mr. Data, any suggestions? I suggest we contact Starfleet, Captain. How about you, Riker? Any suggestions, number one? I'm sorry, Captain. I don't have any suggestions right now. No, I think you're all wrong. What I should do... <laughs> is... something very different. Oh, I kind of assumed I made calls from the view screen. This seems to be not correct. Okay, should we... Should, it's time to pixel hunt to find out how to make calls from the bridge. Talk to Riker... Okay, oh right, touching my own tit is comms. I didn't think of touching my own tit. Alright everyone, it's time to touch your own tit. Thank you immensely to my Patreons and subscribers, and to you for watching. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like, or hit follow if you're new. I'll be posting these VODs throughout the month as we complete the game. If you'd like to join my faithful number one Twitch chat, you can at Twitch TV Scotchbox VR. Mwah. Oh, also, there's a link in the bottom for sending me a present. That's a thing now. The internet's crazy.